Question seven is when we start looking at 2D and 3D trigonometry, and I know this gets a bit tricky for you guys, so I'm going to try and go through it in detail and slowly. Okay, so let's take a look. It says in the diagram below, CGFB and CG, CGHD. Okay, so CGFB, okay, and CGHD are fixed walls that are rectangular in shape and vertical to the horizontal plane FGH. So FGH is this floor here, okay? And FGCB, okay, we have this rectangular wall over here, which is perpendicular floor to the floor, and this rectangular wall, which is also perpendicular to the floor, okay? And then it says steel poles are erected along FB and HD, and they extend to A and E respectively. Triangle ACE forms the roof of an entertainment center. Okay, so basically they're saying that here, these are the walls of this entertainment center, and then this over here is the roof. So that's where the 3D aspect comes in, guys. They're basically saying that those two walls stand like this. And then that triangle ACE is this triangular roof here. That's why 3D trigonometry is kind of hard because you're looking at a flat surface, okay? But you need to imagine these walls here and this triangular roof along here, okay? So you can't be working in these as like joint shapes, okay? They sit at 90 degrees, okay? There's a flat roof, so that's what you need to picture, okay? Lastly, it says that BC is equal to X, CD is equal to X plus two, angle BAC is theta, angle ACE is two theta, and angle ECD is 60 degrees, and they've put all of that on our diagram here. So let's get rid of all of that. Okay, so, 7.1 says calculate the length of AC in terms of X and theta. Okay, so basically the only variables you can have in your expression are X and theta. So where is AC? This is AC over here. Okay, so if we look over here, we've got the angle theta and we've got X opposite the angle theta and AC as the hypotenuse. So we've got a hypotenuse and the opposite. Which ratio involves opposite and hypotenuse? It's sine. So sine of theta is equal to that opposite side, which was x, over ac, which is the hypotenuse. Okay, so now you isolate ac and we get that ac is equal to x divided by sine of theta. And you see that our answer only involves x and theta, which is exactly what we're asked for. 7.1.2 says determine an expression for CE in terms of X only. Okay, so CE is this over here. And we've got the 60 degree angle and we've got X plus two on this side. Okay, so we're trying to find CE, which again is the hypotenuse in that triangle. This here is the adjacent side and we've got our 60 degrees. Okay, so adjacent and hypotenuse is cos. So cos of 60 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which was that x plus 2, over the hypotenuse, which was CE. Okay, so that means that CE is equal to x plus 2 divided by cos of 60 degrees. And if you guys aren't sure of your special angles, just put them into the calculator. Cos of 60 degrees is a half, okay? So we're going to get x plus 2 divided by a half, which is the same as saying x plus 2 times 2, so we get 2 into x plus 2, okay? Remember, it was in terms of x only, and that's all we have in our answer, plus some numbers. Okay, so let's actually fill these in. AC. Let me get rid of this mess. AC we found was x over sine theta. And CE we've just found is 2 into x plus 2. Okay, so let's carry on.
7.2 says show that the area of the roof of triangle or the roof triangle ACE is given by this whole expression. Now remember, area equals one half, one side times the other side times sine of the included angle. Okay, so triangle ACE, we're going to have triangle ACE is equal to, well, we have this angle over here. So this angle has to be included in the two sides that we work with. So that's the one side and that's the other side. So area of triangle ACE is equal to one half AC times CE times sine of the included angle, which will be angle ACE. Okay, so now we substitute in. We found that AC was X over sine theta. CE we've just found is two into X plus two. And angle ACE was given to us as two theta. Okay, so now we need to keep on expanding. We're going to get, okay, I can already see that this two is going to divide into that two to give me one. So we can get rid of that already. So now we have x into x plus two from this expression over here over sine of theta. So that deals with the first two terms, but remember sine of two theta is 2 sine theta cos of theta. Okay, so now if we keep going, we can see that if I put the coefficients at the front, I've got a 2 there and an x, so we're going to get 2x into x plus 2. And now if I look here, sine theta will divide into sine theta to give me 1, so I'm left with cos of theta and that's pretty sure here 2x into x plus 2 multiplied by cos of theta which is exactly what we found. So now it says if theta is equal to 55 degrees and BC is equal to 12 meters calculate the length of AE okay so theta is 55 and BC is 12. Okay so BC is this length x so that means that x is 12 meters and theta is 55. Okay, so now it's saying find the length of AE. Pretty sure they asked for AE. Okay, so if we look here in this triangle, the green triangle AEC, remember the cos rule will say that AE squared is equal to AC squared plus CE squared minus 2 times their product multiplied by cos of the included angle which is 2 theta. Okay, so let's go and put that in at the bottom. So we're going to get that AE squared is equal to AC squared plus CE squared minus twice their product times cos of the included angle which was 2 theta. Okay, and now remember that AC we found was X over sine of theta, and that's all squared, plus CE, which we found was 2 into X plus 2, all squared, minus twice their product. So we have X over sine of theta into 2X plus 2, multiplied by cos of, remember, 2 theta. Okay, so now we've got the variables. They've been given to us, so we substitute them in. Remember that x is 12 because bc is x. So we can say 12 over sine of theta was 55 degrees, all squared, plus 2 into x was 12, so 12 plus 2 is 14, and that is squared. 
minus 2 times x is 12 over sine of 55 multiplied by, we found over here, that 2 into x plus 2 is 2 into 14. So that's the same thing here. So it's 2 multiplied by 14 multiplied by cos of 2 times 55 is 110 degrees. Okay, we're going to simplify it a little bit further before we get into our calculator work. This first bracket can stay the same. 2 times 14 is 28, don't forget the squared. Minus 2 times 12 is 48 over sine of 55 degrees. What I did there was I said that 2 times 12. And then we still have this bracket over here. So that's times 28. Ooh, 2 times 12 is 28, not 48. Look at me. 28. 2 times 12 is 24. My goodness, guys. 2 times 12 is 24. 2 times 14 is 28 times cos of 110 degrees. Okay, so now... I feel comfy enough to put this into my calculator. So, we have, just type it exactly the way you have it written. So, 12 divided by sine of 55 degrees, close brackets all squared, plus 28 squared, minus, we have 24 over sine of 55 degrees, close brackets, into 28 times cos of 110 degrees. Okay, that is going to give us 1279,18, etc. Don't round off yet, but guys, remember this is an expression for AE squared. So now we need to square root both sides to get AE. So you say square root of the answer, and we get 35,77. I'm going to round off to two decimal places. And remember, we're finding a length, so it's meters. Okay, cool, guys. So remember, when you're working with something like this, try and visualize the 3D aspect. Remember that this green roof here is basically a flat roof that lies parallel to this flat floor. It doesn't look like it in the diagram, but that's what it is, okay? And then these shapes here are all in their same plane, okay? And they sit at 90 degrees to the roof and the floor. So just try and visualize, guys, when you get given something like this, if they say it's the roof of an entertainment center, obviously you're gonna have floor, two walls that they told you about, and then the triangular roof that is parallel to the floor. Okay, so try and establish what's 3D and where you can translate things into other shapes. Okay, and that is question seven.